let my calculus group mansplain math to me for 45 minutes, then save their grade with one equation. Sophie can take notes while the rest of us actually solve this, Jamie said, shoving scratch paper at everyone except me. My name is Son. I told him three times already. But Jamie was too busy sweating through his polo shirt to listen to the Peruvian girl in his group. Professor Catherine had just announced a surprise challenge worth 5% extra credit, and Jamie needed every point to pass. His dad would cut him off if he failed calculus again. I've been randomly assigned to a group with Jamie and his four rugby buddies, Tyler, Brad, Connor, and Marcus. Now Jamie was drawing the wrong formula on our board while his friends nodded like trained seals. Tyler kept glancing at me and making comments about how exotic girls probably studied different math in South America. Brad turned to me and started explaining what numbers were, speaking extra slowly and loudly like I couldn't understand English. When I reached for my calculator, he actually moved it away and showed me which button turned it on. Connor squinted at me whenever I spoke, then turned to Marcus and shrugged like he couldn't understand my perfect English. Marcus kept asking if we had electricity in Peru. I started to correct their approach, but Jamie cut me off without turning around. He physically stepped in front of me, blocking the board. When I moved to C, he moved too. Mentioned his hedge fund dad and how he'd been doing this since middle school. I'd seen his last test grade, 43%, but here he was, acting like the math genius. I wrote the correct theorem on my paper and slid it forward. Jamie picked it up, glanced at it, then crumpled it into a ball, tossed it toward the trash. Then he patted my shoulder and suggested I just watch and learn since this was pretty advanced stuff for me. 15 minutes in, they'd gotten nowhere. Other groups were making progress. You could hear excited voices when someone had a breakthrough. Jamie kept trying the same wrong formula over and over, sweat stains spreading under his arms. Connor suggested integration by parts. Wrong again. I tried to explain why, but Jamie held up his hand in my face. Actually put his palm inches from my nose. Asked if I was at least writing things down since that was literally all I could contribute. Brad slid me paper with a chart of smiley faces, pointing where I should mark their progress. Like I was a kindergartner. I'd solved the entire problem in the first five minutes, but every time I tried to help, they acted like I was furniture. When I stood to point at their error, Tyler pulled my chair away so I'd sit down. He muttered something about affirmative action ruining standards. Marcus started humming what he thought was Peruvian music. 25 minutes in, Jamie was spiraling, muttering about his dad cutting him off. I watched him erase his work for the 10th time. When I leaned forward to look, Brad blocked the board with his body and made a shooing motion, like I was a stray dog. They discussed asking other groups for help, anyone but me. When I slid my solution forward again, Jamie picked it up and dropped it on the floor without looking, wiped his hands on his pants after. Connor smirked and said something about those people not understanding real mathematics. Tyler added that I was probably only here to find a husband anyway. 35 minutes in, half the class had finished, Jamie was panicking, his perfect rich boy image cracking. He begged his friends to think harder. The answer was sitting right there. But they decided the Peruvian girl couldn't possibly understand calculus. Not when she should be having babies or cleaning houses or whatever they thought women like me did. 40 minutes in, Jamie's hands shaking, whispering about failing, about his dad killing him. They spent another five minutes drawing the same wrong formula. Brad actually explained to me what a square root was. Tyler asked if I knew what numbers were in my language. Five minutes left. We were one of the last groups working. Jamie looked ready to cry. Marcus joked that maybe they should have gotten a real partner instead of the diversity admit. They all laughed, nervous, desperate laughter. That's when I decided I was done watching them drown. Professor Catherine announced time was almost up. That's when I stood. No permission. No warning. Just walked to our board and picked up the chalk. The solution flowed out in 30 seconds. Every step, every theorem. Perfect. The room went dead silent. Professor Catherine smiled and complimented my work. Said it was exactly the approach she'd been hoping to see. Jamie stared at the board, then at me. His mouth opened and closed like a fish. Wait, you're actually smart? I set the chalk down and looked him straight in the eye. Actually, I'm top of the class. His face went from white to red. Someone from another group laughed out loud. Tyler's jaw dropped. The others just stared. I walked back to my seat and packed up. Jamie ended up passing by half a percent. As everyone filed out, Jamie caught my arm. I'm sorry. And thank you. But I couldn't help but reply with, maybe next time listen when someone's trying to help. A year later, Jamie was showing freshmen around campus. See that girl? That's Stone. Literally the smartest person I know. He caught my eye and waved. I now know growth happens. Sometimes it just takes a little humiliation first.